Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to present my work, uh, Linear Fold, which is a linear time prediction of the RNA secondary structures. Uh, my name is Dejong Deng from Oregon State University. OK, since uh, my presentation is actually the third one today to present the RNA secondary structure, I'll just briefly introduce what is that. So basically, RNA secondary structure was a set of the base pair relationship between nucleotides in an RNA sequence. So the task is simply given the sequence, and the, the goal is to predict its RNA secondary structure. So in our work, we only consider the um, base pairing without crossing pairs, and we leave the pseudo-knot prediction for the future work. OK, so almost all existing approaches using dynamic programming to solve this problem. So basically, the intuition is that you first predict the substructures of, a, of the easier case, which is, uh, which is a subsequence, and then add them together, and all the way up to the final secondary structure you get. So here is a simple illustration. Uh, so in the first step, we predict the structure of every nucleotide. Uh, and then goes to two, and three, and four, and all the way up to the secondary structure of this sequence. So this prediction algorithm is actually cubic time of the n, where n is the length of the RNA sequence. That is being said, if your n, if your length of a sequence is goes twice longer, your prediction time gets approximately eight times higher. So the problem is that can we do it in linear time? So if the RNA sequence is, is twice longer, we actually want it twice more time. We don't want it like a, 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 a much more uh, a bigger number, which it is. It would be very hard to predict a sequence with uh, to pre predict a, a very long RNA sequence. And also, if your algorithm has multiple uh, has multiple calls of the secondary structure prediction, it would be less efficient. So, how can we do it in linear time? So, thinking about the uh, soon not free RNA structure. Um, uh, uh, we, can, we can see that basically every of the nucleotides have three different possible labels. You can mark a left bracket or a right bracket that they're pairing together or has a dot, right? So if for every nucleotide we did one of these three actions, then we can actually predict the secondary structure from left to right instead of bottom up, the conventional method. Okay, so the baseline would be actually three to the n that for every nucleotide, you explore three different actions, and you have an exponen exponential time cost. OK, so our first idea is trying to merge the states in each step, which behaves similarly to reduce the time cost. So after we adapt standard programming, we reduce our time cost to n cubic. On top of that, we applied be a, a approximate search a method, which is beam pruning on top of that. And in this case, we can make our prediction algorithm linear time without sacrificing its accuracy. OK, so how important is the linear time prediction? Let's consider some super long RNA sequences as examples. So for example, if a RNA sequence has 10,000 uh, nucleotides, um, the conventional methods can predict uh, the secondary structure in about four minutes, and we can actually do it in seven seconds. So more strikingly, uh, we take the longest RNA sequence from a RNA central data, which is a quarter million lens, and our prediction algorithm only uses about two minutes to get the structure. And uh, the baselines need about 200 hours and a huge amount of memory, since they are quadratic memory, which in our case is linear. OK, so now I'm going to the details of our algorithm. So I need to introduce two, uh, two simple concepts. One is action, and one is stack. So in this pass, um, I define three different actions. For a nucleotide incoming, you can simply push this action, uh, sorry, push this nucleotide by marking a left bracket and push the nucleotide into the stack. And in the future, if you want to pair this with somebody else, you pop it out. So we have an action-based transition system 
which using the stack to support our prediction. Naively, for every nucleotide, we have three different actions. Then we have an exponential number of paths to reach the exponential number of possible secondary structures, and we simply pick one that has high scoring. In this demonstration, we simply pick the one with the maximum number of pairs. Okay, here comes the problem. So, considering several states where their stacks are same, we claim that these states will behave Similarly, we're actually going to behave exactly the same in these action-based systems because they have the same step and they share the same stack and in the future, the nucleotides we receive are same. So they will never behave differently. The only difference is their history. So what we want to do is that we want to merge these states together. All right, so here is a merging process. We merge these states that share the same color, basically same stack. All right, so now we can see our running time has been reduced, but it's still exponential. Why it's exponential? Because even you, you, you merge the states with the same stack, the, the possible stacks are exponential, because for every nucleotide, you can, you can choose it in the stack or not, so it's still exponential. So we need a further speed up. All right, now I consider a little bit more complex case. So these two states, they actually have different stacks, but their stack top are same. So in the last action, you push the second C into the stack, so they share the same stack top. What does that mean? So these two states will actually behave differently in the search path. However, before this two gets popped, these two states will behave the same. So we claim that temporarily, these two states are same. We call them temporarily equivalent states. Okay, so we actually want to merge temporarily equivalent states. We call this process packing. So in this process, we merge these two states together and ignore both its structure history and the stack history. And then we have a skip action. So now things become different. So since you are popping these nucleotides from the stack, you're actually the previous stack was different, right? So you need to trace back the packing process to see the difference and actually do branching in the pop action. This is different from the previous strategy because the previous pop never gets branching. So it means that after our merged stack top gets popped, we convert them back. So the point is, this has actually a cubic time and quadratic space because the number of the stack top in each state can have at most n. Okay, so now the question comes. So my algorithm is still cubic. It's same as the baseline. So what's the difference? So the point is, the bottom-up the bottom up based uh, uh, dynamic programming algorithm is very hard to linearize because you do it, firstly, you do the substructure of every single nucleotide, every two, every three. However, it's very hard to compare some states with uh, same, uh, so compare some states that, uh, that are comparable and print out something. Because in the bottom-up framework, if you print out something in the bottom, the up states will not appear. In our case, we predict the, uh, we actually do the searching from left to right, so we have some natural natural beams that um, for each step, we can keep a constant number of states only. So the point is, after the stack top merging, actually one state here represents an exponential number of the states in the original search space. So we claim that even we do the linear time, linear memory search, we still reach exponential number of the states. So this is a summary of our uh, demonstration. So we first have an exponential time, and then merge it to cubic, and then we do a linear time beam search. OK, here I'm going to show the experimental results. So we applied uh, two different models on linear fold. Uh, one is the machine learning models. Uh, we pick uh, control fold. Uh, 
from Stanford University, and another one is thermodynamic model. We pick one, uh, which is the Vienna RA phone model. So we linearize both systems using our prediction method, and uh, from cubic time, quadratic space, to linear time. And we call it the linear time C and linear time V system. We evaluate it uh, on two data sets. The first data set is, uh, is an archive two data set, uh, which there are secondary structures for reference, so we can get both efficiency and accuracy. And another one is the RNA central data set. So we have some very long RNA sequences, and it's able for us to evaluate um, their efficiency and scalability. So in this figure, this is a running time uh, comparing the baseline systems, the green line of Vienna, the yellow line of Contrafold, and our linear time systems. As we can see that our algorithm stays linear time, and actually when the lens, when the RNA sequence lens is 3,000, we take two seconds instead of the five and seven in the baseline. All right, so what will happen if the sequence lens gets longer? So for our, this is a log log plot. As we can see that for, for a sequence lens is 10,000, the baseline actually needs about more than 100 seconds, but it stays in 10 seconds to predict. And when this goes to quarter million, so basically, um, since the baseline system use, use quadratic memory, uh, they, are not, uh, they are not able to produce the result um, since the memory is limited. However, uh, we, can, we can reach uh, estimated two minutes to predict the longest RA sequence we have. So this is a memory plot. So we only need less than 10 gigabytes to predict a sequence with a quarter million lens. All right, so as, we, as I said, our, our method actually didn't sacrifice the accuracy to do the beam search. And actually, the accuracy of our, uh, overall accuracy of our algorithm is actually higher than the baseline. So considering the PPV and sensitivity over different, uh, different RNA families, we actually found that um, the longer RNA families, we are both significantly faster and perform significantly better. So in this page, we'll claim that um, our, our beam size is actually very stable uh, in terms of the accuracy, uh, so that we can, uh, we can use a constant beam size for an even longer RNA sequence prediction. And also, our, um, our, our method gets higher accuracy on predicting long-range base pairs comparing to the baselines. So here are some example predictions. We pick three different RNA families, the group one intron, the 16S, and 23S. As we can see that, so after we have the, the beam uh, soft, uh, soft constraints, we actually eliminate lots of the, the wrong, oh, oh sorry. So the blue, the, the blue lines means the correctly predicted. The red, one, the red lines means you predicted, but it's not correct. And the gray one is what you missed. So this is the baseline, and this is our prediction. As we can see is that after our uh, self-constraint, we actually limit lots of the, the, the false predicted stuff to increase the performance. And also, uh, like this base pair, the, the length is 700. Uh, this is about 550. We can catch them correctly instead of the previous methods. All right, so we also have a web server available at uh, Oregon State. And uh, in this web server, we claim that it's actually the world's fastest global secondary, uh, secondary structure prediction tools and also scalable for super long RNA sequences. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, um, so I'm giving some comments here. So firstly, so why our approximation algorithm is actually have a better accuracy. So we, we, we're trying to argue the limitation of the modeling of, the, of, the, uh, of this problem. So assume you have a perfect model. 
the, the one with the highest accuracy must be the one with the highest score. However, our approximation algorithm actually picks the one that the score is less higher than the exact algorithms. However, that structure actually averagely performs better in terms of PPV and sensitivity. That's because the limitation of the modeling. And also, so the, the beam search restriction is actually a soft restriction, different from all the local prediction algorithms, that you have to be in the top K states in every of the step to all the way goes to the end. This means that you cannot have an unstable state in the middle that your current score is very, very low. In our case, this will be printed out. So in, in, in this case, we claim that this soft constraints actually makes the final structure more stable and more favor to the PPV sensitivity evaluation metrics. Thank you. Um, so, uh, it's a good point. So actually, we also evaluated uh, against the, so firstly, the open, the, open data, the open database that was the one we didn't use, so we used our archive two data set, but we, we actually, from the methods group, we uh, evaluated against the RNA structure, which is um, the, the equivalent method in this set. Um, so RNA structure actually performs equivalent as VN RNA that we have uh, small improvements on the serodynamic models. Uh, generally, in machine learning models, we outperform a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So the point is that uh, we actually want to use the same model to compare two different algorithms. So um, in some uh, like comparison, like our because our models are different. And the good thing for linear fold is that actually uh, you can put like any kind of models you like as long as as long as it's, it's fit in this set, and you can just use this algorithm to predict, and also speed it up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.